I want to talk about something really interesting. So we haven't touched on Arizona in a little while. Do you guys remember Arizona? You guys know that uh, that state? Donald Trump uh, lost Arizona the first time the Republicans have lost Arizona in what, like 30 years or something? Mad funny. Giga funny, even. Same with Georgia. But Arizona is a very interesting state. Arizona was one of the first states to be called that uh, was not supposed to be going to Biden, that nobody was really expecting was going to go, be going to Biden back in 2020. And Trump has been uh, coping and molding and seething about it ever since. But it seems that as uh, November is coming up with the midterm elections in full swing, that he has decided to go back to the land of the rising cactus or whatever um, Arizona's called uh, and uh, campaign for some new things. But it seems like his old running mate, his old butt buddy, uh, his old boyfriend, Mike Pence is going to be there too. But the problem is the two have a very different vision about the future of the country and the future of Arizona itself. And they're both uh, endorsing two completely opposite Republican candidates running for office, uh, both for the governorship of, uh, of Arizona. One of the people uh, that Trump is endorsing, we've seen already, and we'll be touching back on that again. I got to tell you, it's definitely going to be interesting. Let's let's touch on this. It's going to be very interesting because the girls are fighting and I want to see them beat each other up. Topping our politics lead now, a Republican face off in Arizona could foreshadow the 2024 presidential primary race. The state's upcoming Republican primary for governor has quickly morphed into something of a bitter proxy war between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence, as CNN's Kyung La reports. A showdown in the desert over the future of the Republican Party. Mike Pence and Donald Trump at odds yet again, this time in the hotly contested GOP primary for Arizona governor. Do you think that they're friends? Do you think that they're still friends or you don't think that they talk anymore? That's so sad that they broke up. They were such a cute couple. It's so unfortunate. The former president has endorsed Republican candidate Carrie Lake. She is my complete and total endorsement. A former Republican. So if you remember Carrie Lake, who was here for our Republican clown car video, where especially we looked at uh, the Arizona debates. Does, that, does anybody remember that? No? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna super slide. <laughs> that song. God bless the USA. Trump loves that song. It's true. It's true me baby no oh my gosh none of you all were here this for the republican clown car video really do i have to like okay anyways this is the lady who said that the uh, 2020 election was stolen because uh thousands of ballots were carried across the border on the backs of mules into uh, arizona all right this is this is the lady that we were talking about she's insane she's absolutely insane i remember the uh, italian grandma mamma mia yeah there was uh there was that lady too Fucking gold. Yeah, that video didn't get uploaded, apparently. Listen, this is the importance of watching the streams. When you don't watch the streams, we forget to upload videos sometimes. And would you look at that? Now you've missed out on so much content and it's all your fault, specifically. It's you, it's your fault, not mine. It's your fault because you didn't watch the stream. Sorry, don't know what to tell you. It's true, the Twitch VOD and the Twitch uh, highlight was made already. It just never made it to YouTube. And yeah, and the guy coping about his 0% voter base, but he's saying that the only reason why it's showing that he has 0% is because the polls lie and he'll come back and win. Ah, oh, what a good meme. Registered as a Republican. Turned independent. I was really fed up. Turned Democrat. I registered as a Democrat. Turned Republican again. The Republican Party, party of solutions. This is insane, dude. This, this woman is out of her mind. <laughs> Republican turn independent turn Democrat turn Republican it's just I, I've never seen somebody flip-flop so hard in my entire damn life I must tell you yeah pick a team already lady I, I've, I've never seen this before she can change her mind yeah let a let let a uh, you just hate women in power okay just let a woman who's trying to be in power let her change her mind her campaign is centered on the lie that Donald Trump Joe Biden. We may not be able to save the whole U.S. as long as that illegitimate president's in the White House. She spouts far-right conspiracies. We had major election fraud. Hundreds, 200,000 minimum ballots were trafficked by mules. You thought I was joking. Some of you who haven't seen this debate or seen our video on this debate, some of you all may have been shark. What's that hyperbole? I don't hyperbolize. 
when I'm talking about conservatives, I don't hyperbolize. I don't need to. They're already insane. Okay. Minimum 200,000 ballots were trafficked by mules. The, the, there were, there were guys and they were wearing their big sombreros and they had like their ponchos on and they, uh, they had a, 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 a badge, uh, uh, like a pin. They had a pin pinned to their poncho and it said Biden Harris 2020. And, uh, they saddled thousands of mules filled with ballots from um, China, signed specifically by the ghost of Ho Chi Minh, who came to finally get Donald Trump out of the office. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, 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 I, I, didn't, I didn't even know that this was going on. I'm Carrie Lake. Like Trump, Lake made her name on television. The former Arizona local news of anchor course. has also borrowed from his playbook, host. frequently attacking those in her you old profession. Fake news here, by the way. I got ambushed by CNN outside. <laughs> I think Carrie Lake has what it takes to get us to where we need to get back on track for our families and gives us hope. Lake has a message for a base and only that group. The question is, is that group large enough to win the Republican nomination? So Carrie Lake is one of the most insane people up there. Once again, there's a lot of other uh, conservatives who are running, who are in the debate. It, the debate was so bad between the Republican candidates that the the guy hosting the debate almost gave up midway through it was probably one of the funniest things i've seen in my entire life and also we probably need to go back and watch <laughs> and watch the entire thing again if i'm going to be completely honest with you there's probably a bunch more hidden memes that we haven't been able to uncover yet it felt scripted it did it was so goofy it felt like a scripted bit it seemed like a like a really good snl skit but like a really good one, not like one of the ones that people make fun of because they're bad. One of the ones that you're like, that was a, no, that was quality. No, that was a bit. But the thing is, it was even better than any bit that SNL or any other like political commentary person could like come up with because it was real. The genuine inflections in their voice was something that you cannot recreate. There's just something so incredible about the human mind when it's like spouting stupidity, but it, it's very hard to just recreate that type of stuff. It's better than any SNL bit. Yeah, maybe, truly. It's from a different dimension. It, it was quite amazing, I must say. But the really interesting thing is that, like we already touched on, the Democrats are helping fuel some of these candidates, but some of them are so far out there and they're so hunkered down and bought into this Trump ideology is that they're not helping themselves reach more bases. And while Donald Trump was able to skate by in 2016 by only appealing to his like rabid, insane fan base and that has only grown as more Republicans have been duped, and um, uh, fooled into following in lockstep because a lot of conservatives, they just follow lockstep. A lot of people say when it comes to our political parties, the left falls in love, the right falls in line, which honestly is incredibly true. A lot of them do just, even if they know something is wrong, as long as a Republican is in office, they're perfectly fine just falling in line and just following lockstep behind uh, whatever's going on because that just fits their goals no matter you know how bad it is for the country, the planet, them themselves sometimes as long as it's not a democrat that's how a lot of them feel it's incredibly sad but you know that's just the type of people that they are right yeah my team good my team good but the problem is it didn't work in 2020 right donald trump's base just isn't big enough just appealing just to his base is nowhere near big enough to be able to make it into the presidency in 2020 and it may not even be and it may not be big enough to make it into uh the governorship because the governor that arizona has at the moment is term limited so he can't run for governor again he has to get out so it's an open seat and honestly there's a good chance that a democrat may be able to scoop in because the likelihood of these people making it is reasonably low i i will say it's way higher than you would expect and it's going to be like a tight race um it, it is a conservative state after all it's still like a red state but uh, the Democrat may be able to ride on the coattails of uh, Mark Kelly, who's up for re-election at the moment in, in this election cycle and make it in. Oh, uh, you know, God willing, because if not, one of these goofballs are going to be sitting in the state house. How are you? Hi. Republican hey, gubernatorial hey, candidate hey, Karen hey, Taylor hey, Robeson, hey, another hey, leading hey, contender hey, for the GOP hey, nomination, hey, says hey, it's not. How do you run against an opponent who is backed by 
a popular former president. If you like Donald Trump's policies and record of, of limited government, low tax, pro business environment, Lamau. and somebody Lamau. with a track record of success, I'm your candidate. If you want somebody who is a, a big personality, then Carrie Lake is your candidate. So the thing is, um, straddling this line is incredibly difficult because Donald Trump will burn you unless you're in complete 100% lockstep. The infighting, it's true the girls are fighting and the infighting is hilarious, I have to say. It's this lady who has to sit up straight and be like, no, they're lying about 99% of the things that they do, but I love Trump, I love Trump. I'm not him, like the most of him, that is the lies. I don't like the lie, but the, the good stuff that isn't even real, I love that about him, okay. <laughs> it's a really hard line to straddle, and a lot of conservatives can't do it because it's near impossible. Trump's strategy to win the GOP nomination is to consolidate support of traditional conservatives, helped Biden by Karen Pence's Taylor Friday rally. Arizona needs Karen Taylor Robeson. Robeson also has the support of Arizona's outgoing Republican Governor Doug Ducey, Hello, who attacked Lake's everybody. support for Trump as a matter of political convenience. Kerry Lake's misleading voters with no evidence. She's been tagged by her opponents with a nickname, Fake Lake, which seems to be sticking. Thank you. <laughs> you don't, don't, what? Wait here, wait one second. If you like Donald Trump's policies and record of, of limited government, low tax, pro-business environment, and somebody with a track record of success, I'm your candidate. If you want somebody who is a, a big personality, then Carrie Lake is your candidate. Damn. The 2020 fake name, Fake Lake, which seems to be sticking. Sheesh, Fake Lake, not the Fake Lake. Oh my goodness. Oh, I guess they're taking one thing from Trump, which is their, their love for nicknames. One thing that's coming out of the Trump presidency that I, you know what, I, I don't hate too much if I'm going to be completely honest, is everybody wants to come up with a goofy nickname for their uh, political opponent. Everybody wants to come up with a name insult. Like that's in now. You know, radical liberal Wa Raphael Warnock and, and a bunch of other stuff out there. Uh, Sleepy Joe, Dark Brandon. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's everybody just wants to go back to middle school nicknames of the people that they're running against. Fake Lake. Whoa. And honestly, as goofy as it is, it is it is reasonably effective to have like a name that. Uh, uh, yeah, Sandy Cortez. Yeah, everybody wants like a, a goofy nickname for their uh, political opponents. It's it's so weird. Dark Brandon is mad funny. Sleepy Joe, I will have to say, is a little funny, too. I will, I will say, but they're pretty meaningless and you kind of, you can, you kind of take them in. You got to take them in a little bit. I, I do like Sleepy Joe. Doug Dussie. Don't say Doug Dussie. Stop. That's not even how you spell his name. His name is Doug Dussie. At least say Doug Dimodome or something. Don't hit me with the Doug Dussie. Stop it. I hate that. I hate that a lot. He should embrace Dark, Dark Brandon. True. Doug Douchey would be a pretty good one. That's a that's a good one right there, I think. Dark <laughs> Doug Dussy. Oh my goodness. It is done. Thank you. A delicate dance for Robeson, courting the right wing. Oh, sorry. One thing that I want to touch on. So Doug Ducey, um, the reason why I said like we're touching on um Arizona again, a lot of you guys who are a part of the channel right now, you weren't there when we were covering the, what was happening in Arizona after the 2020 election. But to, you know, warm some of you guys back up, what happened is that Ducey was going on a bunch of Fox News uh, shows and everything and talking about how they're going to make sure the election isn't rigged and they're going to be checking and rechecking and double, triple, quadruple checking even after the everything was certified and a year after the election was done, how they're going to be checking everything. So Doug Ducey actually hired election auditors from a company like Cyber Ninja, if I remember correctly, which does like website, like backend and does not do vote counting. And they also hired people. Remember like uh, in Arizona when 2020 was happening and it looked like uh, Biden was going to actually win the state, that there were people like outside of the voting houses, like doing like fucking uh, seances and doing chants, 
like oh stop the vote oh mighty lord stop the bring hellfire bring rain brimstone on the democrats you know doing shit like that outside of like voting remember those doug ducey helped hire those people to recount the ballots in Arizona, okay? And just like a quick overview, I don't want to cover everything. These people were sitting crisscross applesauce in the middle of like high school gymnasiums in the summertime, like counting ballots, just like going one by one by one. So Cyber Ninja and these insane people were trying to recount ballots that were already picked and certified uh, already uh, in Arizona to see if there was anything wrong. Uh, ballots went missing. Things were like all over the place. They were like trying to audit voting machines. And I'm going to be completely serious with you. And you can look back at the video. It should be like linked up here when we upload this. They were unironically looking for bamboo fibers in the voting machines to see if they came from China. And the only reason I think that they unironically believe that there would be bamboo fibers in the voting machines would be because they think that Chinese people are all pandas. And that's literally it. Like while they're putting together the voting machines and like doing Xi Jinping's bidding by rigging all of the ballots, that they would be like munching on bamboo in like the, like they'd be like typing in fake ballots with one hand and like munching on bamboo with the other and some bamboo like uh, 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 fibers would fall into the machine. That's, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Doug Ducey was one of those people who did that, that on top of the fact that he wanted to send those same people who did those like weird prayers outside of the voting booths to go to people's houses and then try and get them to confess that they uh, lied about their votes. So if you think that Doug Ducey sounds like reasonable here, the only reason he sounds reasonable is because he's up against somebody who's even crazier than him, because even he had to give it up at one point in time. For Robeson. Courting the right wing means sowing doubts about the 2020 election. Where are you on the 2020 election? At a minimum, the election was not fair. And I know people want to hear a different answer from me. But when you take a look at, you know, there, there was concern from a lot of voters. That's it. Nothing. People were just concerned. Was it fair? No. Why? Um, I don't want to lose this election. Okay. Good to know. When you look at the primaries we just went through and some of these other states, I think messages to take away from that are certainly the Donald Trump endorsement is a powerful asset, but it's not the silver bullet. Arizona's primary will be another signal for national Republicans. Kyung Law, CNN, Phoenix. Thank you, uh, Kyung Law. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Very interesting. That's going to be insane and an incredibly funny fight between those two. Evidence? What are you, a lab coat? But... I, I didn't want to go into them talking because I want to hear more from the voters themselves because these guys are really running the state. Okay, so CNN, Donnie O'Sullivan, um, which I'm sorry, he's from the UK. I think he's like Scottish or Irish or something. I forget. Um, anyways, he's a reporter for CNN. He does on the ground reporting and he went to actually Arizona to go uh, interview some Trump supporters, interview some Proud Boys and interview people who want to vote for a uh, fake lake or the other lady, I forgot her name, <laughs> who are running for uh, uh, who are running for the governorship for this uh, primary. And I think it'll be very interesting because these people are absolutely insane. OK, because if you think they were crazy, just look at some of the voters who are helping push these people that far right. He didn't lose. Thank you. He just didn't lose. Do you believe the election was stolen? Yes. Do you have faith in elections now? No. I love it how they're just, did he lose? No. Why? He didn't. Do you believe that Wait. he just didn't lose? Do you believe the election was stolen? Yes. Do you have faith in elections now? No. Do you believe the 2020 election was, was stolen? Uh, no, I don't believe the 2020 election was stolen. I believe that there are aspects of the 2020 election that were unfair. In Arizona, a Republican party at odds with its- I love how they keep repeating that. They, I think it's unfair. How? How was it unfair? What, what was the unfair part? I've never heard any of them like articulate what the unfair part is. They just keep saying that it's unfair. How? I think what they mean by unfair is that they didn't win. Right. What, what they mean by unfair is that I voted and I lost. Self. Trump NPC. and Pennsylvania competing events with two very different understandings of reality. We need a landslide so big that the radical left cannot rig it or steal it. Even if they try. At Trump's rally, a bonfire of conspiracy theories. Oh my theory. gosh, was this? Even if they try. If they... Oh my gosh, look, it's conservative Hatsune Miku. 
What the hell? Look, it's it's unironic like a Republican Hatsune Miku. It's her. She's here. This is what happens when they fed her a bacon wrapped hot dog goo. Ah! <laughs> Other people. If you if you don't uh um, yeah, it's Shu. Look at Shu. Ah, uh, look at her go. You're a long way from home, girl. This is in New York. People who didn't watch the beginning of the stream, they're very con confused with that uh with that reference. That's a callback. Trump's rally, a bonfire of conspiracy theories. Have you watched the January 6th hearings? I no. have. What do you think? Oh, yes. I think they're a bunch of bullshit. Oh. Well, because do you have both sides? Or are you getting one side of the story? You mean like the side that attacked the Capitol? You really believe that happened? I was there. Okay. I have a lot of people that were there too. And? And saw things that it wasn't what they say it was. It's, I, I don't, I don't, like, honestly, I don't know how to reach some of these people. I'm going to be honest. Some of these people you like, you just can't reach. She has insider information. She does. She knows she has 12 water bottles. All right. Just in case one of them Antifers try to poison one of them. She's not, she, she's up to their games. Okay. Have I watched it? Yes. Is it, it, it it's, it's fake though. Everything in there is fake. Because I know a guy who knew a guy who saw a guy who watched a guy on YouTube who got his information from a guy on Facebook who was there and they say it's not what the Democrats say that it is. There's only one story and that's like people being like, they tried to kill me and I have your face on video, but they don't have the other side of the story, which is that Antifa. But there's been hundreds of Trump supporters now charged. I don't know if pled guilty. So, so, and do you think it's right for those people to have those people in jail and not what get any justice in our American system? Are you kidding me? Think so this is my favorite part because for 40 years in this country, progressives and left-wing people have been trying to reform the criminal justice system for 40 years, nearly half a century. But only now when Trump supporters tried to the, these people, like, arguably, are domestic terrorists. So only when domestic terrorists, who they like, are put in prison, when it comes to pretrial uh, hearings and bail reform and holding people pretrial and the difficulties that come from that and the likelihood of you being uh, arrested dramatically increases if you're held in jail and not having enough money to be able to uh, get the same freedoms and the same rights as other people who do. That's all been, they've been, we've been hounding our politicians to change that. But only when they tried to destroy the Capitol and install somebody who lost the presidency into the office to keep him in because they just didn't like the fact that the way the election went. Only now are they finally on board with a, with prison election uh, reform. Only now when they hear videos about Trump supporters all singing the national anthem to each other through the bars because they think that they're like political prisoners and they're going to be hung by a dark Brandon. Only now they think that we need to do uh, prison reform. It's insane white woman explains racism to black men because she knows a couple of black friends energy it was right that they attacked the capital i don't they didn't that was an inside job buddy vast conspiracy By theory who? that those who stormed the capital were not trump supporters is widespread here have you guys been watching the january 6th hearings at all no no <laughs> no we saw it when it all went down and it's dark brandon dark brandon did it it's true it, it, it is it's dark brandon he he tried to frame Trump and Trump supporters. It's a uh, it's it, it's who who framed Donnie Trump. It, many people are asking this question. I have the answer. It's Dark Brandon. Obviously, it's an inside job. It's been it was BLM and Antifa that were dressed as Trump supporters, but like at the very instance when they were being attacked, they sh swapped with real Trump supporters who were thrown in jail. But those guys never did anything. But the the images of them that were in that that they that that showed them in the Capitol are fabricated by Dark Brandon because there was never them and it was CGI at the end of the day to put them there. Yes, it was the Necrobots. It was the Necrobot spiders that gripped them. It was the Necrobot grippers that put that rearranged them. It gripped them softly yet firmly to put them in the place of the actual Antifa that were there. Many people are saying this and it's all correct. I saw it on Facebook.
And we saw like a lot of the BLM and the Antifa people in the building as well, and and, and it's just it's just nonsense. It's but I think I told like you. 800 people now have been charged, right? Yeah. None of them are Black Lives Matter or Antifa. Yeah, that They're doesn't mean anything. Them. That doesn't. <laughs> wait, I love. Wait, I need to hear that again. I need to. I need to. I need to listen to the pause. Census but on. I think like 800 people now have been charged, right? Yeah. None of them are Black Lives Matter or Antifa. Yeah. That's Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's just his his brain was shutting down. It, it, I like it. his brain just blue screen. It's true. He was doing Thinkle. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Nah. Yeah, that They're doesn't mean anything. That correctly. doesn't mean they anything. Have not been They're not charging them correctly. But but who were wait, do they need to be charged at all? They're not being charged correctly. Did they do something? Are they worth being charged? What happened to all the BLM and Antifa that were there? How did they capture these people? How did they get images of them at the Capitol? Not and brought into court and for their due process because they have not been arrested. Uh, Hunter Biden hasn't been arrested. Trump okay, has just, told lies about the They can't get enough of Hunter Biden's dick. They love Hunter Biden's dick. I, I promise you, like conservatives have seen Hunter Biden's dick. Honestly, they may know it more than uh, more than he does at this point. They may have forgotten what it looks like from all the coke he's taken in. It's insane. Have you seen the Bannon Biden thing? I haven't. If you can send it. The election in that he said he didn't really lose. Do you think that all the lies about the election are damaging for American democracy? You believe he lied? Do you not? No, I do not. I don't. I mean, he won. But these are no be, longer yeah, he's fringe won. ideas. He's, he's a majority of Republicans do not believe Biden legitimately won the election. Good Lord, 70%. Do you imagine how like awful it is to be living around these people and like 70% are just like, yeah, dude, elections are stolen. I'm going to keep voting though. I just have to vote harder. Th their solution to fixing the broken election system is to vote harder. Hey guys, any of you want to talk to us? The Proud Boys, who Trump once infamously told to stand back and stand, and stand by, by, now a regular fixture outside his events. Any Proud Boys want to talk to us today? No? You've been watching January 6th hearings? No. Nothing to say. There's Nothing to say. There's CNN, right? CNN, yeah. 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 Thank you. Not fans? Okay. We don't Thanks, like your guys. time around these parts here. The former president here to campaign for a ticket of conspiracy theory spouting candidates who say they would have overturned the results of the 2020 election in Arizona. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've been really wanting to get like a cowboy outfit. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Can we reach the 30%? Yeah, you, you can you can reach them. Yeah, 100%. You can even reach the people who believe it's stolen. Like a, a, a good Socratic, I, I talk about it sometimes, but a good way to reach them is the Socratic method is to get them to actually think, right? To get them to answer questions like that. So if, so when Donnie asked those people, when you saw them like take a moment and be like, uh, well, that doesn't matter. You need to do that over and over and over and over again, and preferably be somebody that they trust, look up to, care about respect the opinion of those types of people and those types of questions how do you know that what would you do if you're wrong how did you make sure that you weren't wrong what information would you have to be provided with to change your mind those types of questions over and over and over and over again helps change their mind because you can't change their mind you can't get into somebody's head and force them to change all you can do is bring them to water but the more and more you bring them the thirstier they become and the more uncomfortable it becomes to have their ideology that is in complete difference with the facts that they're provided with, the more uncomfortable that they'll get, the more that they'll start to be like, nah, or start to get receptive to the idea that they could be incorrect. But that takes time and it only takes them. You can't remember, you can't change their mind, but it's something that you'll have to work hard for and that will take maybe even years to get them to, to, to change. But it is possible. And I wouldn't say to give up on those people if you know them. Lil Nas X art. I don't know about that. Uh, mostly because I'm not homosexual. This meme is very real. But I will say I have been looking at looking to get like a cowboy outfit. You know, get like a little cowboy hat. You know, a nice like button down that I leave open and have like a wife beater underneath with like some blue jeans and some uh cowboy boots. I don't know. I feel like it'd be a good look or like some overalls. I feel like it could be. I feel like it could be kind of like a good look. A little yeehaw. You know, I make a trip to Indiana. 
make a make a trip to Indiana, get a, get my little yeehaw on, put a sombrero on. That's true. If I'm going hunting for big booty Latinas, I could uh, I could put a sombrero on. I know like Latin American women do love it when you put on sombreros, especially if you're not Hispanic. So I think that's I mean, I am trying to give me some like Latina pussy. So, I mean, you know how it is like Carrie Lake, candidate for governor. And I know for a fact we will no longer accept rigged elections. Who's with me on that? Pence here campaigning Woo! for Lake's Republican rival. Arizona needs Karen Taylor Robeson in the State House. Here we met some Republicans who are done with Trump. I voted for Trump twice. Yikes. If uh, Mike Pence runs, I'm voting for Mike Pence. Okay, so why is that? I just think that you know, everyone's seen the January 6th committee. Uh, he stood up for democracy that day. You know, he's like, I'm not leaving the Capitol because um, I need to be here. And he was the one that was making phone calls to the military and trying to fix the situation while Trump was crying in the dining room. So just so you know, Pence was in complete lockstep with whatever Donald Trump wanted to do until he literally couldn't do it. So I guess you can say it's nice that Pence didn't overturn the election, but Pence didn't have any power to overturn the election. He had no legal basis and no legal power to stop the certification of the election. They could have just done it without him. So to give him praise for that is like giving you guys praise for stopping the assassination attempt on Gretchen Whitmer, which I'm proud of you. Good job. But you didn't really do anything. You know, <laughs> you were just kind of there. He, did, he, just, he didn't make it actively much worse than it was. But even among this crowd, there is sympathy for Trump's election lies and support for a 2024 run. You're about to see Pence speak here. Uh, Trump's not a big fan of him right now. I understand that. I hear that he could have not certified those results pending all the claims of the fraud. That's not and true. I wish he would have done that. No, nope. Pence had no legal basis to do that. Also among those here, Rusty Bowers, a lifelong Republican and Rusty Bowers? That's his name? Rusty Bowles? That's crazy. Speaker of the Arizona State House. We're talking to a lot of people in here today who said they're not even, they're not watching the January 6th hearings. They still believe the yeah, lies I about know. the 2020 election. How do you, what, what would be your- My man, he's actually laughing. He's laughing at them. They're laughing? Antifa and BLM dressed up as Trump supporters to frame them and now they're in jail without any hearings and you're laughing? He's like, I am. Your message to them. I, I I'm tired no of pretending it's not. I can't help him. If you don't want to look, you don't want to see, then you won't see. You know, but I, I've seen enough to know. And I know that all the people right in this room have done their best to count everything and do it all right. He testified before the oh, January 6th committee about Trump's efforts to get him to overturn the 2020 results in his state. What is these conspiracy theories, these lies about the election, about democracy, what is that doing to, to trust in this state? It destroys it. It destroys it. We've got to let things go. What would need to change for you to have faith in U.S. democracy? I don't trust our government, first of all, period. And if you don't have fair okay. elections, what good are they? Wait, did, you ever worry that Wait, did Donnie right? just, did like, collapse? Was he period. okay? And if, if you don't oh, have okay. Oh, he looked down. I thought he was about to start crying. I'm like, I feel you, Donnie. <laughs> Fair elections. What good are they? Do you ever worry that you're wrong? Do you ever worry that? Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever worry that maybe yes. Trump has sold you a lie? Yes. And <laughs> if you start researching and believe that you're the one who's wrong and that you're crazy, which I did do, thinking, yeah. okay, maybe I'm wrong and maybe I am being brainwashed and believing something that someone's telling me, but then you go in and look the other direction and you find lies after lies after lies. It doesn't matter. So I thought that I was wrong. And so I saw something, but I thought that the other side was lying, but more. So I just decided to take the side that was lying, but I guess not as much. That is not a smart way to look at things, I guess, because they're all on board with this. They're not saying there's any lies, but it's just, it's just wild. It, it is insane. Every day, more lies. Apparently, there are no lies that Trump said, or I guess those lies we can look over now because I think the, re the Democrats' lies were worse. I'm not sure what those were, I guess. I don't know where they looked, but honestly, I highly doubt that she did any real introspection. And at the end of the day, it was um, a lot of confirmation bias because it is really uncomfortable to figure out that you're wrong. If it was stolen or not, if the Republicans want to take back the House and take back the Senate and then uh, all, uh, eventually the White House, they need to move on. 
And it's true. A lot of Republican voters are done with the 2020 uh, election thing. Even the ones that are um, on Trump's side and think that it's stolen, honestly don't think it's that serious because a lot of them, once polled, say, yeah, it's time to move on, which is incredible that you think that an actual election, like the presidency was stolen from your guy and you're like, yeah, it's time to move on. It's, we're, it's, we're, it's, uh, it's old news. It's wild. A lot of people even say that it's annoying. It's, it, it's crazy. Well, what's the percentage? Let me see. Half of Republicans want to move on from the election fraud claims. Half of Republican voters are eager to move on from the baseless election claims that Donald Trump has been spewing. A new political morning consulate poll released on Wednesday shows that 50% of Republicans are eager to move on from Trump's claims of election fraud, though Politico noted that Republican respondents answer differently depending on how the question was worded. Politico noted 53% of Republicans say that they support Trump's continued focus on the fraud in 2020 election compared to 36 who say they were against it. Among all respondents surveyed, 64% of Americans believe the Republican Party should move on from Trump's claims that the, uh, the election was stolen, compared to 23% who say that they should focus on it. Only 23% think that they should focus on it. Almost like one in five. Incredible. Incredible stuff. And there is some crossover that some do uh, uh, think that it's a problem and still just want to move on. They're just bored. It's not fun anymore. I guess it's completely ridiculous. And these people are going to unfortunately be uh, a force to, to mess with because even though there aren't that many of them, they're a reliable voting block and more left wing people don't vote nearly as much as these guys. They are activated. Thankfully, that is changing a bit with the new things happening, especially the people are starting to understand what it's like to live under the laws that conservatives say they want to pass because watching somebody say something that's bad is one thing. Actually having to experience it is another thing. These people, unfortunately, are still out there and they need to be stopped. But it is incredibly funny watching these people try their hardest to make their dog shit worldview make sense. Wild. All right. Pog. Pogarino. Pogaroni even.